The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Hey everybody, welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. Something a little different today, we are going to go through the college football week one top five performances and give a little breakdown there. We're also going to go through the top three lock-in covers for week two. We love taking bets for those who are going to cover. We're going to take a look at my top three. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome into another episode. This is a little different. Jeremy and Blake aren't able to be in here with me today, but I'm going to make sure to still bring you guys some sort of content. We're going to talk some college football. I know we've got NFL coming up, but I didn't really want to talk about the NFL without the other guys here to kind of help me out with that. We wanted to just dive right into it. All right, we're going to talk the top five performances. Of course, we finally finished up. We weren't able to talk about the Duke Clemson game. Uh, and so, you know, of course, have to go through the, just the top five overall, and I don't want to give any spoilers there. But let's start off with number five. All right, number five was North Carolina versus South Carolina. I think this game overall, we talked about this on our last episode on Tuesday, but looking at it overall, looking at what North Carolina was able to do, their defense actually held their own. This is something that was a little surprising to see their defense hold in there so tough. Uh, we were thinking that maybe this could be a game that you could smash the over on, but that wasn't the case. They forced nine sacks on Spencer Rattler. Incredibly tough to do for one single team to do that in one game. So that was an amazing performance by North Carolina. I think their defense is really what stepped up and won that game, which is surprising when we're talking about North Carolina and everything that they have to bring to the table. But then jumping up to number four, I'm going to put Utah versus Florida. I think Utah deserves to be in this top number this this top 5 at this number 4 spot uh, and possibly an argument to be made for moving them up the list even because I think Utah performed very well. I think they they won as many expected, but some expected them to lose without Cam Rising. We didn't expect their passing game to be much and I think Bryson Barnes stepped in and did a great job with what he had there in week 1 and I think this was a really good test for them in week one for them scheduling a tough team like Florida. And so seeing everything that they had there, I really like this a lot for uh, for Utah stepping in here and, and making those changes. Ultimately, their defense is what really won this game for them. A really good game by Utah. I think that defense looked amazing in what they were able to do. But their, round, their ground game is really where it all came together. That's where everything seems to have clicked on offense and that's what we expected from Utah, and they gave us exactly what we expected, and that's a really good thing to do, especially in week one, walk away with the win against a tough SEC opponent like that. Jumping up to number three, we've got Colorado versus TCU. Yeah, obviously everyone's going to throw this in the top five because it was a big upset. Nobody really expected Colorado to come away with the win. A lot of people were counting Coach Prime out. Everyone thought it was crazy for him to throw his, his son in at quarterback and start him there at quarterback. But what we saw from Prime and his son, Shadur Sanders, that entire offense, Travis Hunter, we can go down the list because they're they're made of a bunch of talented dudes. We knew that they were going to bring talent. We knew that Coach Prime was going to bring talent over to this squad, but they shocked a lot of people with how good they really were. So it was a really amazing game from them. Uh, a lot of fun to watch that Colorado team put up the numbers that they put up, and everyone's talking about them. A big argument could be made to put them up even further for top five performances. I think they could deserve that number two spot. I don't think the number one quite, but you know, looking at what they, they did, the only reason why I bumped them down to number three is because I think their defense needs a lot of improvements. I think the performance on the defensive side of the ball was really pathetic overall, but you know what? They walked away against a tough offense, let's be honest. I, I know we can talk about how this offense lost a lot, but it was still a good offense, and Sonny Dykes is a really good coach. So it was a very, very good performance by Colorado. Very excited for the rest of their season and what Prime is able to do there at Colorado. Now let's jump over to number two, and that is going to be Florida State at LSU. I we We all picked LSU on the show. And I think a lot of people were picking LSU, and it was reasonable to believe that LSU is going to bounce back and have vengeance this year and come away with the win. And a lot of us thought that they would do that because, 
you know, they started off the season on the wrong foot last year. They know that they're going to have to go through the, the SEC this year in that schedule. It's not going to be an easy schedule for them to win out. They know that they have to win out to make it to the college football playoffs. Uh, at the very least, make it to the SEC championship game with two losses at a minimum, or at, at, I'm sorry, at a maximum, to be able to make it to the college football playoffs. I think if they win the SEC with two losses, they could still make it in. I think that's a very reasonable thought. But this is a tough loss for LSU, and it's 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 demoralizing to, to lose in week one to a tough opponent. But hats off to LSU, too. I think they had a really good performance in the first half and then even into the third quarter. But that last quarter and a half, Florida State really put on the Jets. They won 45-24 to against LSU, a team that made it to the SEC championship game last year after losing to Florida State. And seeing what LSU put together last year, all of us had high expectations. Maybe that's why they lost. Maybe maybe that those expectations kind of put too much pressure on them. Whatever the case may be, I think LSU is a really good opponent. For them to pull away in that third, that third quarter and into the fourth quarter the way that they did, the defense only allowed 113 rushing yards against a really tough rushing team, you know, a rushing offense there at LSU and seeing Jaden Daniels and what he's able to do on the ground. They were able to keep him in check. So everything that they did, you know, forcing two turnovers on defense, amazing. And on offense, they went nine for 14 on third down conversions. So an amazing way to start your season off in week one. That was a really good thing to see. And they also had just about seven and a half yards per play on offense. That's not too bad. That's that's picking up a first down every two plays. So you can be really happy with the production that you saw. I think Jordan Travis and seeing what we saw out of him, Heisman contender worthy. Uh, I think he had an amazing game. You saw that that kid Coleman from uh, Keon Coleman from Michigan State step in. We talked about this game already, so I don't want to go into depth any further than I already have. This is why I put Florida State up at number two, and that's why I make the jump with them over that Colorado TCU, just because I think their performance was more whole, and I also think there was more questions answered about Florida State than for Colorado. No diss to Colorado. We've been giving them a lot of praise because we didn't give them praise before this game. They earned that that praise from us, and so we're going to give that praise to Colorado. But Florida State at number two because I think their performance was an entirety, and it, it was it was a a whole performance. It was a performance of pure excellence in every facet of the game. They started off slow, but they kept themselves in it the whole time, and they were able to pull away in the, in that last quarter and really make it make it make it hurt when it counted the most. So Florida State number two top performance. They did an amazing job. Uh, couldn't be any more happier with the way that Florida State performed, and their their fan base should be ecstatic. Jumping on to number one, the number one top performance of week one, you have to give it to Duke going against Clemson. They should have been outmatched. They had so much less to offer when it came to the talent on the field. Looking at what Duke had and going into this thing, it was, it was just an overall amazing performance by them. When you look at the comparison between the two, with four and five star recruits on their current roster, Clemson has 39 four and five star recruits. Duke came into this game, they currently only have two four and five star recruits on their entire squad. All right, compared to what what the talent is over at Clemson, Duke did not stand a chance when you look at the reality of things, but they didn't care. They stepped on that field and they were just as competitive. They were just as big. They were just as tough. They were just as fast. They played an amazing game and Duke shocked the nation and they shocked Clemson. This forced a lot of questions about Clemson, but it also made us look at Duke a little bit differently. This basketball school has a football program now. They won a good amount of their games and got to a bowl game last season. And now they come into this season starting off week one with a big time win against a big time opponent in a big time arena, being able to stop Clemson when they needed it the most. And they held them to only seven points. An amazing offense, amazing talent. We thought Cade Klubnick was going to come in and be a possible Heisman dark horse from all the talks about how how high his ceiling is. So seeing what Duke was able to do with less talent on the field, they were so balanced on offense too, really keeping that Clemson defense. Remember, a tough Clemson defense, a big and 
and very destructive defensive line, they were able to keep them guessing and seeing what they did. They had 175 yards through the air and 199 on the ground. That's about as balanced as you can possibly get. No, they didn't put up a lot of yards, but their defense stood tall. Their defense was amazing against this Clemson offense overall. They forced three turnovers, which really pushed them ahead in this game. Duke absolutely deserves this number one top performance spot here uh, this week in week one. And who knows, they're probably going to make this list a couple more times throughout the season. Duke, an amazing team right now. And you know what? If, if they can keep this up, they could really wreak havoc in the ACC. So looking at Duke right now, I think they're building off a lot. Hopefully they don't get their heads too high. Hopefully they're able to keep on rolling, keep this thing going, and roll right through the ACC and keep things keep things going well because we love seeing what we're seeing over there at Duke right now, turning this program around. And really, really causing a lot of people to scratch their heads and wonder why they're seeing Duke on the screen beating a team like Clemson. Now let's get into the top three lock and covers for week two. I'm going to start off. You guys know I'm an Oklahoma fan. Uh, I'm going to pick Oklahoma this week, but it's not because I'm trying to be a homer. It's because I saw what Oklahoma was able to do, mainly on offense. All right, I'm not too worried about what they're going to do on defense against SMU. I think SMU lost a lot of pieces, including Tanner Mordecai. Uh, and they just looking at them as a whole, I don't think they're going to be able to keep up offensively. But I'm going to pick Oklahoma to cover. Right now, I think it's kind of a disrespectful cover right now because Oklahoma right now is expected to win by 15 and a half. That's their, that's their spread. So they're expecting that Oklahoma is only going to win by 15 or 16 points. So right now that's at minus 110 and that's over on DraftKings and I'm checking this out. It might be a little bit different, but pretty similar on all the draft on the uh, uh, sports books right now. So looking at that, that's that's an amazing cover for me right now. I think that is the easiest money I see all weekend because I think Oklahoma is going to win by 20, 30 or even more by what we saw in week one. If that if that defense can stay strong and stay fast and be as athletic as and overbearing and and rotate guys in and out the way that they did last week, I think you're going to see this become an even bigger blowout than what I expect, but I'm trying to keep my my expectations real. I think they win by 20 or 30, and I'm being totally honest with you on that projection, and that's not with me being a homer on this. I think it's just an easy easy comparison between these two teams. SMU is not going to be able to keep up with this offense. Uh, whether it be their offense trying to keep up and add as many points as Oklahoma is going to put up on the board. Not only that, but their defense is not strong. They're not going to be able to keep up. They're going to be out of breath. You saw how fast Oklahoma was able to move, get on the ball, and snap it. They scored uh, They scored 21 points in, in, in no time. They were up 28-0 to zero by the end of the first quarter. All right, And this was against Arkansas State, I think a very comparable opponent to SMU. So ultimately, I don't think it's going to be another 73 to zero like we saw last week. They might be able to put some points up on the board, but Oklahoma is going to cover that easy. I even was able to bump mine up on DraftKings and bump that to a minus 19 and a half for Oklahoma to cover that 19 and a half because I think they're going to win by a minimum of 20. And I was able to bump that to plus 119. That's a big return. All right, so if you're gonna if you're gonna take a cover, I would absolutely at least take Oklahoma at that 15 to 17 range. I don't know how much is gonna change before game day, but make sure to hop on that because Oklahoma is absolutely going to smash that cover. I put a lot of money on it. I'm expecting them to win big, and you can you can definitely come back to me in the comments. Let me know what you think on that cover, but I absolutely think that this is an easy one. Another one was really hard for me to take. All right, and it's Colorado covering that minus three spread versus Nebraska. If you were lucky, you were able to jump in before halftime against TCU and take them while they were still an underdog against Nebraska, where it was plus. But I think Colorado easily wins this game, and I think they win by double digits easily. Uh, I I think this could really get out of hand. Uh, I I don't like that I'm picking Colorado because I'm rooting for Nebraska, but this is going to be putting me in a hard place because... I feel like if I'm being smart with it and betting with my my brain rather than my heart, I'm picking I'm picking Colorado to cover this minus three spread very easy. It's minus three right now as I'm talking to you guys through the through the camera. But looking at it, I just don't see how 
how Colorado doesn't win by double digits. So at minus three, they're uh, you know uh, for covering that that three point spread and and winning by more than three points. That's at minus one twelve on DraftKings sportsbooks right now. But when I bumped that up to a minus nine spread, so for them winning by double digits. That put it up at a plus 191. So that was absolutely crazy, uh, and and I had to jump on that. So I really think that Colorado will run away with this. I don't think I have any faith in Nebraska's offense, and, and I hate to say this, okay? I hate to say it because I'm rooting for Nebraska. And you know what? Even if I lose out on a little bit of money this weekend because I put some money on Colorado, that's okay with me because I can I can still be happy that Nebraska won this game or cover that minus three spread, but I just don't think it's going to happen. Jeff Sims looked atrocious. He threw for three interceptions and even kind of got lucky on another that was a fumble that he was able to pick up and chuck it to the end zone, kind of on a garbage play, and he was able to make it work, but that offense just couldn't do anything. Four turnovers total on offense, and they just had such a hard time moving the ball, and Ultimately, I just don't think Nebraska's offense is going to be able to keep up with how explosive Colorado's offense was, and I think they're going to come out swinging, and I think they have a lot to prove by beating Nebraska, and I think Prime wants to beat them big time. I don't think they're going to keep this close. I think Nebraska is not on the same level as TCU currently, and Colorado just now beat TCU. So I think they're gonna I think they're gonna beat Nebraska. I think they're gonna beat them by double digits. So I put that that cover at nine points just so I can earn a little bit of positive uh, po- you know positive money in that put it at a plus 191. The odds definitely in your favor on that. Um, so yeah, just looking at those covers, I, I have them at them covering this easily. Even if you take that at a minus three, if you want to bunch that together with something else, bunch all three of these covers together because I think it's going to be uh, a three pretty easy picks. Now you can definitely come back at me if I'm wrong, but I think that's one that I'm very confident on with those two. The third one was a little tough because I saw a few teams that I thought I could have thrown in here, but I went with Notre Dame. Notre Dame has been incredible these first two weeks, putting up big numbers. Sam Hartman is looking really good, very efficient. They're just playing smart football. Their defense has been very good. Notre Dame has their first little test going on the road to North Carolina State. All right, and they're going to play North Carolina State, but we have to remember North Carolina State doesn't have Devin Leary. Uh, They are kind of taking a step back overall. I don't think they looked quite as good. They didn't face a great opponent week one, so we can look at that and be honest with ourselves there. I just think Notre Dame is just that good. Their offense is is rolling. They're ticking. They're clicking together. I think they look amazing, and that defense is good enough to slow down any offense in the nation, let alone North Carolina State. I think they're going to do just fine. I think Notre Dame is going to win. Right now, they're set at 7.5. I think they win by double digits. This is another one that I wouldn't be surprised if Notre Dame were to win by 20, but I'm I'm comfortable saying that they're going to win by 8 or more. I think they win by 10 easily. So picking Notre Dame, I think this is one that's maybe a little less easy for me to pick compared to that Oklahoma or Colorado, but looking at that 7.5, I still think that's disrespectful to Notre Dame, and I'm smashing that cover as well. Right now, that seven and a half on DraftKings is minus 108. Uh, and another one that I would probably sprinkle in with that game is possibly an over because they're setting the, the total at 51. Notre Dame's offense has been putting up some some good numbers. They've been scoring over 40 points in their first two, week, two weeks. Uh, granted, they went against two weaker opponents, and I understand that, but I do think that they're still going to be able to put up some good points. I think they could they could easily put this up to maybe like a 40 to 30 game and you easily hit that 51, you know, maybe a 40 to 20. And, and looking at that, I, I just think, I, I think Notre Dame's got this in the bag. And I also like that, that over 51 at minus 110. So that's just an extra sprinkled and bet I'll throw in there for you. But I really like Notre Dame. I think all three of these should be able to, to, to hit. Uh, I don't know exactly what that would look like in the sports books. If you were to parlay these together, that's probably what I'm going to try to do and see if I can get a little extra money out of them. Uh, and like I said, I'm even going to adjust those game lines a little bit in my favor just because, I, for one, I think Colorado and Oklahoma will both cover even more than what they're expected to. So, guys, this is my suggestions. You can take it for what it's worth. If you want to hold off and see what my suggestions 
pan out to be after this week before taking any more suggestions from me. Uh, I, I totally get it. And let's be honest, parlays aren't always the smartest things to do. So maybe not parlaying all three of these together just in case one doesn't hit. Uh, So maybe taking each of these as individual bets is a good way to go because I do think two out of three of these should hit and that easily wins your money back on whatever you're throwing on them. So guys, this is my top three covers for week two. And uh, that's also the top five performers of week one. We're very excited for week two. We are going to be live on Saturday morning at Midland University in Fremont, Nebraska. Huge shout out to the university there. Hopefully everything goes through just fine for us to be able to set up there, have a little live event show for you guys on Saturday morning at 8.30 Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern. So make sure to tune in with us live on YouTube. You can chat with us, jump jump in the chat and everything. There's also going to be a giveaway, so make sure to tune in so you can enter in for that giveaway. All kinds of fun stuff. We've got all things going. We thank you all so much for your support, but make sure to hit that subscribe button. Help us out big time with that. And uh, always follow us on social media. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X, whatever it's called this week. Um, So please make sure to check us out on all of that. Help us grow. You guys have been amazing so far. Uh, and we're shooting for right around 5,000. We're still still trying to hit that $5,000 or that 5,000 subscriber mark. So that'll definitely help us out if you can hit that subscribe uh, button right now. And you can always hit that notification bell too so that you know when we have new content uploaded. But we're always here on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8.30 in the morning as often as we can get that content out to you. And then of course live on Saturday mornings at 8.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m., Eastern. Uh, So that's 8.30 a.m. Central, 9.30 Eastern. You can always join us live there. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts, make sure to give us a five-star review. It's the best way to help us out there. But guys, thank you so much for all of your support up to this point. And until next time.